In 2015, global governments signed up to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts when they agreed on the Sustainable Development Goals. In December 2015, they met in Paris to reach a climate deal. Climate change does not affect the globe equally. The countries responsible for the greater emissions of greenhouse gases are not necessarily the ones suffering the most. The least developed countries are among the most vulnerable in terms of exposure to the effects of climate change. With the limited technical and financial resources, they face the greatest obstacles to adapt and develop with the current temperature rise. Many livelihoods and lives are threatened by climate change as weather events are becoming increasingly unpredictable and with greater devastating effects. In Paris, all countries were asked to contribute their solutions. Many of the least developed countries have shown their willingness to act by submitting detailed climate plans. We asked the leading climate experts from LDCs about their hopes for a climate deal and about the pledges they had made. From the Bangladesh point of view, uh, we have said that we will not increase our greenhouse gas emissions more than the average of the developing countries. We are committed, as a matter of fact, to be a part of the global process to reduce greenhouse gas, although we emit only 0.3 tons per capita per annum. As much as the INDC is focusing on mitigation, but Uganda has clearly brought it out that for us, the main priority is adaptation. Focusing on different sectors like agriculture, like water, livestock and others. Now, number one, we would like to see a legally binding agreement that uh, limits global warming to a minimum of two degrees. And ideally, we should limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. That's because we cannot afford the adaptation measures that will be required uh, with a two degree increase in global temperatures. The rich world can afford that. Number two, we would like to see all parties, all countries, make ambitious and legally binding commitments to reduce greenhouse gases. Number three, we would like to see a support mechanism built into that agreement to support uh, the LDCs and vulnerable uh, countries. Many LDCs mostly contribute to global emissions from agriculture, forestry and land use. But with the need for development, these countries will be looking for support in building low carbon economies. The way we save our planet should be what science advises us and what social equity, what equity is expected. Yes, we will have adaptation and mitigation strategies to make our country and our planet free of impact of climate change, but this should come with the support of the developed countries where they play their responsibility in a differentiated way. Experts say the Paris summit must deliver on climate financing, specifically putting adaptation funding as a priority. The climate funding has to be predictable, has to be craft. Private sector will go where there is profit to be made and therefore they can probably come for mitigation activities like solar and so on. But adaptation in remote areas, I don't think private sector will go there. So therefore, it has to be official, it has to be government funding. The funding that is available now in the country is focusing on mitigation. There's no funding for adaptation. And yet there's a lot of needs for adaptation. We cannot do mitigation alone without addressing adaptation issues. Countries also expect greater commitment to reduce emissions to confine the global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees C through new technologies. As far as transport is concerned, most of our greenhouse gases are emitted uh, in this sector. And so uh, we are committed to improving the sustainability of transport by using low carbon uh, technologies. 
Current adaptation and mitigation efforts will not fully support communities that are bearing the brunt of the ever more intense and frequent weather hazards. With this in mind, experts from LDCs have pushed for the inclusion of loss and damage in the agreement. The loss and damage should be separately treated in the fund process outside adaptation and mitigation. Countries who are highly impacted to the level of huge damage, they need to have a separate mechanism which is different from the mitigation fund, from the adaptation fund. On December 12, 2015, close to 200 countries agreed to a climate deal in Paris. It was the first universal agreement to cut greenhouse gas emissions and limit effects of climate change. So, what is in this historic deal for the least developed nations? For the least developed countries going into Paris, there were two major uh, issues that we wanted uh, to make sure were reflected in the agreement. First was the long-term goal of one and a half degrees, uh, which we, along with the small island states and the Africa group, were pushing for. We pushed very hard, we talked with everybody, we tried to persuade them, and in the end, we did. And that was a major achievement. The second <coughs> was to ensure that the least developed countries were highlighted in terms of funding, particularly for adaptation. There had been promises made in the past, but uh, not a lot of delivery on those promises. We wanted them to be delivered and ensured, and particularly focused on the least developed countries as one of the most vulnerable groups. Again, we achieved that to a very large extent. And the, the last thing that we, along with a number of other vulnerable countries, pushed for was to recognize loss and damage from the impacts of climate change as a reality. And we see that now. It is now a separate article in the Paris Agreement uh, after our persuasion of the other countries that they should be so. The big um, challenge going into Paris and agreement coming out of Paris is that all countries are now working together. The developed countries have accepted their higher degree of responsibility, both because they have been emitting emissions for, of greenhouse gases for longer and also because they have grown rich by emitting greenhouse gases and therefore have bigger responsibilities. They have agreed to provide $100 billion a year from 2020 onwards and that's uh, a floor, not a ceiling. They will get bigger than that in amounts in the future and they will provide uh, funding for both mitigation in the large developing countries, as well as adaptation in the most vulnerable countries. And that is now a major outcome in a legally binding format in the Paris Agreement.